welcome to The Unbelievable Truth, a show that hides the truth like Botox in Carrie Ann Kettley. <laughs> the game works like this. Each player gives a talk that should be completely false, except for four true facts which they're trying to smuggle past the panel for points. Players buzz in if they think something's true. If they're right, they get a point, but if they're wrong, they lose one. Our guests competing to tell the biggest lie since the Navy SEAL called out pizza for Mr Bin Laden <laughs> are Scott Dooley, Julian Morrow, Kitty Flanagan and our first contestant. Andrew Hansen wanted to be a rock singer when he grew up and he was in a band called The Fantastic Leslie that released an album called A Tiny Mark. The impact A Tiny Mark had on the music world made even that title an exaggeration. <laughs> <laughs> Andrew's topic is potatoes. The Pontiac was developed in Tibet by a man who named it after his strangely shaped pet, a pointy yak. <laughs> the King Edward potato is named after England's monarch, Queen Elizabeth. <laughs> Men can even iron a shirt with a potato because the starch... I'm going to say that's true. I'm Men gonna... can't iron anything. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> You lose a point. Continue, Andrew. Men can even iron a shirt with a potato because the starch will stiffen the collar. Ironing a shirt with roasted tomatoes also produces excellent results. <laughs> right, what about potatoes in the economy? Well, in the country Tristan de Kuna, which looks remarkably like a potato chip, they recently used potatoes instead of money. At the local Maccas, it was hard to tell the difference between the fries and your change. <laughs> yes, I'm going to say that's true. Which part is true? Well, not the fries for change. Potato is a currency. <laughs> the currency. Potato is currency. That is true. Ooh. <laughs> it, it, the... it is true, because actually one potato is currently worth the entirety of Greece. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> <That's true. laughs> Potatoes were used as the currency up until 1942. Even this stamp showed their value with the number of potatoes in the corner. <laughs> so there you go, well done, one point. <laughs> Continue, Andrew. The Mr Potato Head toy was not modelled on a potato, but on an unfortunate looking man named Benford E. Joyce. <laughs> he, he is the real life ancestor of our very own potato head, Barnaby Joyce. <laughs> Julian. Well, he is our very own Mr. Potato Head, isn't he? Ah, uh, yes, but the assertion there is that Benford E. Joyce, a made up person, <laughs> was the real life ancestor of Barnaby Joyce. So in well, that case, in that case, I withdraw. Yeah. <laughs> in that case, it's too late to withdraw. Two points. You lose a point. Oh. It's lucky for me because it wouldn't surprise me if Barnaby Joyce was descended from a made up person. <laughs> <laughs> How else did he get here? <laughs> potatoes are essential in engineering. The foundations of a bridge in South Australia were made from crushed potatoes. <laughs> also made from crushed potatoes was this person's face. <laughs> Before windscreen wipers were invented, drivers had to actually lean out the window and rub the rain off with a potato. Scott. That sounds believable. So you think it's true that you had to rub potatoes on the window? You're just gullible. It is actually true. Thank you. The, the, the waxy residue acts as a water repellent and several motoring blogs still recommend this practice. I know. Although uh, mashed potato does not work as well. <laughs> right, well, let's get on to potatoes as food. The Spanish tapas dish called patatas bravas translates as, what's the deal with tapas? I paid 23 bucks for this tiny bowl of potatoes. <laughs> To save time making packets of chicken flavoured chips, Smith's has genetically engineered a chicken potato. <laughs> Coincidentally, a potato has the same IQ as a chicken and as these three women put together. <laughs> Julian, what do you think is true there? I reckon the IQ of those three women is less than a potato. <laughs> true. <laughs> Except, um, <laughs> Except Andrew said they had the same IQ, which was so obviously false you lose a point. <laughs> In Melbourne, the hot chip shop Lord of the Fries used to have the same name as the famous book Lord of the Flies, but business was rather slow. Flies? Flies, anyone? No? Flies? 
Raw potatoes taste exactly the same as onions. Kitty. They do a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> they have okay. the same crunch. This is not called the unbelievable similarity. <laughs> <laughs> well, I tell you what, because it, this is true. You do get a point there. Yeah. A potato and an onion and indeed an apple apparently all taste the same. Uh, firstly, you have to cover your eyes and hold your nose so you can't smell it, but the taste itself is the same oh. and apparently tastes sweet. <laughs> Continue, Andrew. If you use one of those foot shaving devices and then deep fry the shavings of your dead foot skin, they taste exactly like potato chips. <laughs> I was going to say, that's not true. They taste like parmesan cheese. <laughs> Everybody knows that. Who hasn't done that at a dinner yeah, party yeah, when yeah, you're yeah. caught short? <laughs> Potatoes are the most common prop seen in Hollywood films. If you look carefully at the original Star Wars movies, one of the asteroids is in fact a potato. <laughs> and in Titanic, you might have spotted that famous mistake where a, a huge potato accidentally snuck into shop. <laughs> potato! Please, please take Andrew Hansen. Andrew managed to smuggle one truth past the panel, and that was one of the asteroids in the Empire Strikes Back, hurtling asteroids, was a potato. Strangely enough, though, in MasterChef, all the potatoes are actually asteroids, <laughs> in order to make Matt Preston look smaller. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be back with more lies and the occasional truth after this break. <laughs> Rain is God crying. And that's why it always <laughs> rains when God cooks with onions and watches Huggies commercials. <laughs> Welcome back to The Unbelievable Truth. And next up, it's Scott Dooley. During his stint as a Nova breakfast host, Scott Dooley filmed a short movie with Charlie Sheen. It was described as amateur, poorly written and badly performed, but still a real step up from Two and a Half Men. <laughs> Scott's subject is rain. The rain in Spain falls mainly on the plane. Yes, Andrew. Uh, do you think that's true, that the rain in Spain <laughs> falls mainly on the... Oh, well, you know, in actual fact, most, most people are quite plain looking, so the rain <laughs> would fall mainly on the plane. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so you lose a point. Rain is God crying, and that's why it always <laughs> rains when God cooks with onions and watches Huggies commercials. In order to see a rainbow, you must have your back at the sun, which is why Renee Zellweger has never seen a rainbow. She's always staring directly into the sun. <laughs> Kitty, what do you think the truth is there? The law of averages, <laughs> the fact that you haven't put a truth in yet, says that you have to have your back to the rainbow or the sun or whatever to see the rainbow. That is indeed uh, true, yes. You have to have the... <laughs> yes! There's an old European belief that uh, anyone passing beneath the rainbow would be transformed, man into woman and woman into man. They must have walked under a lot of rainbows in the first four seasons of the footy show. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody likes rain, which is why weathermen always lie about it. It's actually in the weatherman's code of conduct that a chance of rain must be changed to... Probability of sunshine. <laughs> and partly cloudy to... Largely sunny. <laughs> Refusal to make such changes has led to a weatherman actually being sacked. <laughs> Kitty. Uh, I think a weather person has been sacked for not changing the words. God, I don't even you know, they're, they're, listen, do you, I? I said the last one, you have to have your back to the rainbow you, in order to see it, like you have to have a mirror or something. That wasn't right either. You're not listening seems to be working because it's true. I, You're kidding. Oh. <laughs> yeah. a, a California weather reporter was sacked recently for refusing to reword a chance of rain to a probability of sunshine and partly cloudy to largely sunny. He actually got sacked there. Presumably he meant. was worried that people would lose their trust in weathermen. <laughs> <laughs> you get a point, Kitty, congratulations. 
You can predict the rain with 100% certainty by watching animals. Whenever it's about to rain, you will always find fish hiding in water. <laughs> um. Andrew, where else is a fish going to hide? <laughs> in a cupboard? <laughs> if a fish was in a cupboard, it would be hiding. But when a fish is in water, it's not hiding. It is if it's no, a... Oh. Think, think about it, because otherwise, are you currently hiding on land? <laughs> if we were to go and suddenly say, let's play hide and seek. Oh, look, we're already hiding where we are exactly now. <laughs> fish are not hiding in water. That's just where they live. You lose a point. <laughs> if you see dogs eating grass, it's definitely going to rain. If you see dogs doing this, it's going to vacuum. <laughs> And if you see a dog doing this, you're going to need new trousers. <laughs> the people of Antarctica have over 100 different words for rain, which is stupid because it hasn't rained there for two million years. <laughs> and that's probably why this shop isn't doing so well. Selling umbrellas here. We got umbrellas. <laughs> flies for sale. We're selling flies. <laughs> The ingredients of rain used to include Mount Franklin water, but recently they found it was cheaper to use Sprite. The flavour comes from MSG and the vitamins come from B12, who is a distant cousin of B2. <laughs> By the way, those who hate rain, I'm sorry to say, but tomorrow a massive Category 5 cyclone will hit Australia. Don't you mean outside chance of sun? <laughs> Thank you, Scott Dooley. Scott managed to smuggle two truths past the panel, and they were, rain does actually contain vitamin B12. Useful to know. He's not related to B2, though. Um, <laughs> scientists say it hasn't rained in parts of Antarctica for two million years. Either that or no one's really bothered to check the rain gauge, I guess. <laughs> After the break, Julia Morrow tells us lies about Qantas. <laughs> OK, the kangaroo is associated with Qantas because when its pilots land, the plane bounces along the runway. <laughs> Welcome back. And next up we have Julian Morrow. When Julian Morrow joined the chase, he had no criminal record, a respectable job and hair. So it's really worked out well for him. His topic is Qantas. The history of Qantas dates back to the dream time. According to Aboriginal rock carvings which show flying kangaroos and Aborigines complaining about the legroom in economy. <laughs> yes, Scott, I reckon the there, there were pictures of flying kangaroos. You reckon there were? No, there are no Aboriginal rock art of flying no, kangaroos. No, I didn't, no. But, Malfunction. Qantas is, is, <laughs> is the world's oldest continually operating airline. That's what I said. Although, so, point. the words continually operating and Qantas don't necessarily go together <laughs> anymore. <laughs> Qantas was founded on the 9th of the 9th, 1909, by Sir Wilmot Hudson Morrow. <laughs> he started an airline so that he could make his fortune by massively overcharging people for airport car parking. <laughs> The pronunciation of the name is so tricky that the airline itself once ran an ad where it's called Quaint Ass. <laughs> the kangaroo is associated with Qantas because when its pilots land, the plane bounces along the runway, <laughs> mimicking the fast hopping of a kangaroo. There goes my upgrade to business class. <laughs> uh, real kangaroos can in fact fly. <laughs> but only if they travel Qantas. Qantas actually has a policy of allowing kangaroos on board, including on one very special occasion, Skippy. Quant <laughs> yes, Scott, what's the I thing? reckon that's true. They'd let a kangaroo on there. Wouldn't that, you? that is indeed true. Yeah. <laughs> on one special occasion, they did allow Skippy the Bush kangaroo on board. And on a second occasion, as a first-class meal. <laughs> Tasty. <laughs> I do like the idea of someone, you know, when you see the fat guy coming down the aisle, sitting there going, seeing the kangaroo going, I bet he sat next to me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He'd need nice. the extra leg room, wouldn't he? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Is your Joey going to cry the, all the way to Melbourne? <laughs> <laughs> the flying kangaroo symbol took on a grim irony in 1994 when a Qantas plane landing in Alice Springs hit a kangaroo trying to cross the runway. 
It turned it into a flying kangaroo for 68 metres. <laughs> but that poor kangaroo is the only recorded death caused by Qantas if you exclude Neil Perry's food. <laughs> To stop Neil suing us, should make clear those deaths were due to starvation because of Qantas serving sizes. <laughs> Although one passenger did vomit to death when he saw Neil Perry's ponytail. <laughs> Thank you, Kamal. Ladies and gentlemen, Kamal. <laughs> Speaking of sexy Qantas hosties, after his 2008 Qantas trip to LA, Ray Fiennes, seen here with severe jet lag, was... <laughs> was overheard saying, the service in Qantas business class is excellent. <laughs> yes, Scott, what do you I think the truth is? That he did say that. No, no, as far as we know, he did not say that. I oh. bet you we thought it, though. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he might have said the servicing was good. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Kitty? I heard he said it was only so-so. She wasn't that great. <laughs> Get what you pay for. <laughs> After that incident, the, the acronym of Qantas was known as Quickie Available in Toilets Are Staff. <laughs> Rafe should have tried Qantas first class though, because it is so luxurious, the passengers even get an extra seat belt for no extra charge, and this is true, free use of an iPad. Yes. You get an extra seat belt. Yes, it is true you get an extra seat belt. Okay. The one part we don't know is why you get an extra seat belt. <laughs> That's $5,000 worth of slight psychological reassurance, yeah. isn't it? Oh, my seat. only hope is that when the plane's going down, it's actually much harder to get out. Oh, the two seat belts to get on! <laughs> There's never been a situation where the plane went down and everyone died and they've gone through and gone, if they had one more seatbelt in, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. this all would have been. <laughs> all right, so you get a point. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it comes preloaded with the 1986 film Rain Man, in which the actor Dustin Hoffman failed to look more retarded than Tom Cruise. <laughs> this famous quote well, Qantas, Qantas never crashed. Qantas never crashed. Interestingly, was true at the time it was filled, but Qantas has since crashed once when in 2011, bad weather forced a Qantas 747 to crash land on the set of Oprah. <laughs> Tragically, no Oprah audience members were killed or horribly maimed. <laughs> that wasn't bad enough. Qantas has also been condemned for using prison labour to wrap headsets like this and for using child labour in its ads. <laughs> Yes, Andrew, what do you think is true then? That is child labour. Those children are, did not fly to the desert to sing Peter <coughs> Allen songs for fun. <laughs> prison labour, though. It is actually true that prison labour wraps the headphones. And I think this is an unintentional truth, but I think the Qantas ads are kiddie labour, aren't they? I have actually heard that Alan Joyce knows there's a cheap Southeast Asian choir that he wants to replace them with. Yeah. So. <laughs> Thank you, Julian. You only managed to smuggle one truth past the panel, and that truth was, in the 1970s, this is how Qantas was advertised in British cinemas. Thanks very much. Yeah. Look after you on these quaint half aeroplanes, do they? Qantas, sir. They're not all convicts, are they? Aussies. Quiet, Rosa. <laughs> Coming up next, a talk about cats with Kitty. Cats. I have 27. I'm a very lonely lady. <laughs> Finally tonight we have Kitty Flanagan. Kitty is a stand-up comedian who recently returned to live in Australia. After years living in London, she just wanted to get away from all those annoying Aussies. <laughs> Kitty's topic is cats. I have 27. I'm a very lonely lady. <laughs> what, are you, what, are you, what are you asserting there, that Kitty has 27 cats? The second part. <laughs> Kitty, I'm going to defer to you here rather than get in trouble. Are you a lonely lady? I've got heaps of friends. Shut up. <laughs> you lose a point. And a friend. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> 
95% of women who live alone are a bit mental and fear they will one day be eaten by their cats. The other 5% are proper mental and actually hope they will be eaten by their cats <laughs> so they can live on inside. <laughs> Whenever one of my cats dies, I follow the Mormon tradition and I marry it. Were I living in ancient times, however, Every time one of my 27 cats died, I'd find myself bald and eyebrowless. Wow, and what a sexy thing I'd be. <laughs> because in Mesopotamia, the death of a cat was mourned by shaving one's head. That sounds like those crazy, freaky, messed up Egyptians. <laughs> that sounds like something they'd get into. Yeah, except she said Mesopotamia, which is not Asian. <laughs> yeah, but... Sorry, Scott. Oh, there's a point. It would be very obvious what had happened to you, wouldn't it? If, if that was the rule, your cat died, you had to shave your head. Hey, can we not, can we not talk about this? Julian's clearly suffering the death oh, of a cat. I'm so sorry. Because you asked, Scott, yes, um, I in did. Egypt, uh, the way they mourned a cat was by shaving one's eyebrows, which was a little bit silly when you think about it, because how are you supposed to look shocked by the death of your cat if you haven't got your eyebrows on? <laughs> uh, in ancient Egypt, killing a cat was a crime punishable by death, but I think that's probably only because cat owners were getting really sick of shaving their eyebrows off. Um, I think that's true. Which part? The killing, if you, if you mess with a cat, they knock you off, because they, yeah. they, they treated them pretty well, right? Yes, that is true. <laughs> yeah. They treated them pretty well, right? By treated well, I mean worship. Yeah, <laughs> cats, cats were considered sacred in ancient Egypt because they protected the crops from the rats. You get a point. Well done. Continue. Max Fraktar, the king of Persia, part solved the problem when he introduced eyeliner to the Egyptians, which enabled them to draw on their eyebrows. However, this solution proved time consuming because if you started the day angry, then you got sad, then happy, <laughs> then surprised. Then angry again, then most of your day was spent in the bathroom rubbing off your eyebrows and reapplying them. Is it something about Egyptians spending a lot of time in the bathroom? <laughs> no, that, that, that was the Mesopotamians. I can't believe I didn't sneak that one past you. <laughs> one of your amazing truths about cats is that Egyptians spend a lot of time in the bathroom. Oh, yeah, I didn't think about that. Oh. You lose eight points. It's not very catty, is no. it? No. The cute cartoon character, Hello Kitty, first appeared in a children's comic in Turkey as Merhaba Bisibiyak. Hello. Little cat with a moustache. <laughs> I've, I've eaten a Turkish kebab that I think might have had a cat in it. Uh, you can believe that Hello Kitty is Turkish. You lose a point. The Hello Kitty company now manufactures everything from women's sanitary pads to rocket launchers for the military. <laughs> Yes, Scott, what do you think is true there? I promised my mum that I would never say sanitary pad on television again. <laughs> so I think it's the first thing. I'm not sure you worded that right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you are right. You do get a point. The Hello Kitty branded sanitary pads exist. <laughs> Kitty, do you just write a lot of jokes about Hello Kitty because that's what somebody says every time you ring them up? <laughs> no, mostly they say to me, hello, little lady with the moustache. Um, that's just, that's oh, just age. Turkish that's just yeah. age. That's, you know, it's only started happening recently. <laughs> In Thailand, the police department uses Hello Kitty to shame officers who commit minor transgressions, such as turning up late or nicking stuff from the stationery cupboard. They're made to wear pink Hello Kitty armbands for several days as punishment. For major transgressions, such as lampooning the king, offenders can choose between two weeks carrying a Hello Kitty backpack and parasol while driving a specially modified Hello Kitty police car, or death. And so far, most have chosen death. <laughs> Thank you, Kitty. Kitty managed to smuggle two truths past the panel, and they were. In ancient Egypt, everyone in the house shaved their eyebrows if a cat died. If a dog had died, they shaved their head and their whole body. And if a goldfish died, they just replaced it. <laughs> and in Thailand, the police department uses Hello Kitty to shame officers who commit minor transgressions. <laughs> they made to wear pink Hello Kitty armbands for several days as punishment. That's amazing. Can you believe it? It's extraordinary. If you are really bad and you kill somebody, they make you wear Crocs. <laughs> <laughs> and that brings us to our final scores for the night. 
You will be surprised to find out that in last place with minus six points, it's Andrew Hansen. <laughs> in third place with minus five points, it's Julian. Yeah. In second place with three points, it's Scott Dooley. Yeah. And in first place with an unbeatable five points is today's winner, Kitty Flanagan. Yeah. That is it for now. A big thank you to all of our guests. They have all been unbelievable, and that's the unbelievable truth. Thank you. Yeah.